Welcome to Pitch Brand Talk, where insights meets innovation in the world of brands. Today, we have with us CMO of MoneyView, Mr. Prashant Naidu, who will be sharing with us some great insights on the world of fintech and whatever is happening in the marketing domain in that area. Hi, Prashant. Welcome. Hey, hi, Ritika. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, I think that uh, it's always been interesting to have conversations with uh, Exchange for Media, and I'm looking forward to this one as well. Thank you so much for doing this today. And uh, I mean, my first question is, of course, going to be about, you know, with changing consumer preferences, and especially in the financial sector, how how is Money View kind of marketing the brand and the product and the service? And, uh, you know, how is the marketing strategy ensuring the alignment with the evolving consumer behavior? Okay, sure. Um, so just to give some context, right, Money View, uh, we have around 65 million plus app downloads and we service close to 19,000 PIN codes, right? And we have more than 5 million loans that are disbursed till date. So uh, we do operate at scale, right? And um, we do make sure that whether it is our marketing strategy, whether it is our communications that go out, whether it is in-app experience, there is always a, a sort of a cohesive flow that happens between all three, right? Uh, that is something that which is very uh, that is something which is very core to us. Um, we have our app available in eight languages, and it gives the users a very simple and an intuitive experience. Um, you know, uh, whether it is the upper middle class, the middle class, or even the affluent segment, right? We service everyone and um, we ensure that the kind of offers that we make, the way in which we communicate to these different consumer cohorts is customized. Um, and uh, the customization happens not just at the communication stage, but it also happens at the offer generation stage. Um, currently, we are working, uh, uh, we are uh, giving out personal loans to consumers, but we are also working on a banking product. We are also working on a credit tracker product. So uh, I think that uh, it's not just about, uh, you know, uh, we, we also ensure that from the first touch point, which is the Play Store, uh, we have custom Play Store pages, the app journeys, the life cycles on communications, they're all tailor-made for the consumers, right? Yes. The, uh, you know, the fintech industry has evolved a lot over the years and customers are expecting a seamless journey between multiple touch points, right? That is one of the primary reasons why fintechs are even present. So right. that is the area that we have focused on. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's broadly it. Uh, the other philosophy of ours is that uh, we want the customer to feel empowered, right? Uh, so in terms of, you know, choosing your loan tenure, choosing your interest rate that you're comfortable with, etc., we do allow for uh, a, a great level of customization for the consumer, obviously depending on their credit score, right? right. So uh, we feel that uh, fintech as a space itself is a little uh, challenging to understand. Uh, there's there's reasonable level of understanding that consumers have, but still there's a lot more that we can do. And in that, uh, uh, with the industry being at that stage, uh, wanting to give the power to the consumers to be able to choose is something which is a key focus for us. Right. And so, you, please continue, sir. No, yeah, yeah, you can go on. Yeah. So uh, you rightly mentioned that there's a lot of PIN codes that you service, right? And I'm sure a lot of it is not just in the tier one area. There's some of it is in tier two also and beyond as well. So when yeah. it comes to servicing remote areas as, as such, you know, how are you engaging with the customers there? And I'm sure there are some challenges also. And what are the successes and challenges? And how are you ensuring a, you know, seamless experience for them as well? So for tier two, tier three customers, like I mentioned earlier, I think one of the big things is, of course, the availability of the app in vernacular. Mm -hmm. uh, not just the app, but uh, we send out vernacular com communications even through our SMS, email, or WhatsApp and push notifications, right? So mm -hmm. four channels outside of performance channels um, and brand channels, we ensure mm -hmm. that there is enough representation of vernacular content. And the consumers seem to be responding to that very well, whether it mm -hmm. is open rates, whether it's click rates, whether it is engagement rates, we see that there is a much higher level of, uh, you know, engagement that is present uh, once we start offering vernacular content to the consumers, right? So that is one. 
The second thing is that, um, so we use a lot of ML and AI. We have in-house data models and systems that allow us to identify and refine uh, the quality and cost of acquisition, right? right. We use a lot of internal analytical tools. It's not just in marketing, but it's also with our underwriting, obviously, uh, where we are able to give very personalized offers to consumers. And, uh, you know, we are able to identify uh, mm -hmm. a lot more about the consumers through this approach and hence are able to give very personalized offers, right? Yes. Um, that is the second thing. The third thing is that uh, we have a research and insights team uh, who constantly does a lot of uh, uh, consumer understanding to see what's working for them, what's not working for them. We continuously do A-B tests uh, mm -hmm. to identify what kind of communication, what kind of offers are working, what are not working. Uh, so, so, you know, we are constantly experimenting, evaluating and A-B testing with audiences. So it's not just about tier two, tier three, right? It's about any consumer who's there in India. Uh, mm -hmm we leverage these tools that we have and mm -hmm. make sure that customization is at the core of whatever we are offering to them, yeah. right? Because yeah. I think in financial services, customization is one thing which is extremely critical because uh, the offer that works for you might not work for me and vice versa, Absolutely. right? So, Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's a very different industry to say, uh, how maybe an e-com works or a traditional retail sector works or a services industry works, you know, yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, personalization is key in this industry and that's where we have put a lot of focus. Mm -hmm. So even though we reach out to 19,000 PIN codes, we literally have the underwriting capability to be able to generate uh, unlimited number of offers and with, the, uh, with permutations and combinations. Right, yeah. right. Absolutely. And I mean, Finance is an area, especially when money is in, involved, trust is paramount. I mean, if people, consumers just won't give you their money when money yeah. is involved if there's no trust. So yeah. in that sense, how are you building trust through your marketing maybe or maybe the experience? How is it working for you? Um, so I think that uh, if you talk about trust, right? Um now, currently, we are predominantly in the personal loan category, right? The yes. call of the instant, instant personal loan or the personal mm -hmm. loan category, right? So there is an outflow of money from our side, yeah. right? But as we are moving to a finan towards financial services, for example, we'll be launching a banking product, mm -hmm. uh, we've already launched a credit tracker product for cross-sell, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. uh, trust would become a key factor, right? So there are two, three things, right? The first thing is that um, our uh, the way in which we approach consumer communication itself mm -hmm. is very transparent, right? There are no uh, there are no hidden charges. There are no hidden you know there are no asterisk more often than not, and we ensure that you know there are no caveats in the offer that we are making to the consumers. Right. Right. That right. is. What we also treat consumers with empathy during repayment uh, hurdles, right? Especially, uh, you know, you hear a lot about it, uh, you know, all around in the news about, uh, you know, the, the way in which uh, uh, companies collect uh, the repayments from the consumers, but we are very different with our approach. We are very empathetic towards them. And that also builds a certain level of trust because, uh, uh, there are a lot of situations where people take loans when they are in a, in a fix or in a spot, right? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. identify that and we try to deal with that in a very empathetic manner. Right. The next thing is that uh, we have introduced a chatbot and a voice bot, right? For quick, mm -hmm. query, uh, for quick query resolution and at least first level resolution is being provided to the consumers much faster now as compared to where it would have been earlier. So right. the involvement of a customer care executive then, you know, uh, uh, doesn't have to be so early in the uh, early in the flow and hence it can be mm -hmm. addressed much quicker, especially if there are smaller issues that we are addressing. Right. The next thing is that, um, you know, uh, uh, we have also onboarded a brand ambassador at Ranbir Kapoor. Uh, mm -hmm. We've done a campaign called uh, Man Hai to Mani Hai, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we got the celebrity also was to build a certain level of credibility with the consumers. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that uh, that has also helped in a, to a great extent for us to be able to uh, 
uh, uh, you really build our top of mind with the consumers, build our consideration with the consumers, and that mm -hmm. reflects the number of downloads that we've had, the rate at which we've been growing. Um, you also look at, uh, we also continuously keep uh, using social listening tools. Uh, we keep evaluating how our Play Store uh, feedback is coming through. If you see, we are one of the highest rated apps on the Play Store, right? We have a 4.7 star rating and uh, our you know, endeavor is in spite of having so many downloads and in spite of it being a business where you say no more often than you say yes to consumers, yeah. especially in lending. Um, mm -hmm. It speaks volumes about our credibility as a platform because, you know, especially the Play Store rating, right? Okay. So it's it's across our marketing approach. It's uh, uh, it's across our marketing approach, the way in which we are transparent with our communications, the way in which we are very upfront on our app with respect to all the offers, etc., that we give out to the consumers. We've been we yeah. been that you know we are we are very on the face, and there is no uh, you know a caveat involved uh, right. if you are doing something, especially for a, uh, right. a promotion. So yeah. Right. Also, I mean, in India, uh, recent surveys have said that uh, financial literacy is only at 27%. So in a country where financial literacy is uh, so low, and it is a key aspect of the fintech industry, right? So yeah. I mean, how does MoneyView approach uh, customer education also and uh, the challenges also that come with it? Um, so, we are a, we, so we are a very, we, I think we are very cognizant of, this fact that financial literacy is quite low, and I mentioned this earlier as well. Yeah. So, um, if you money, you actually started off as a personal financial manager app, right? And I think that ethos of educating the consumer about you know how are they spending their money, how can they be more prudent about the way in which they are going about their finances. You know, um, how how should they be careful of uh, the quantum of loan that they are taking, what interest rate they are taking at, etc. Right? We we want to educate them uh, and actually improve the literacy because it works well for us as well, right? And right. informed consumer is always a better consumer, right? Absolutely. And uh, so we use a graduation based strategy, right, mm -hmm. to help borrowers borrowers bring discipline and growth in their financial journey, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we do blogs, we do videos and SMS communications where we educate the consumers about various aspects of personal finance and we mm -hmm. offer them like valuable insights as to how they can go on their financial journey and how they can become much more robust with respect to their decisions, right? We have explainer videos we've tied up with influencers uh, to simplify finances to the masses, basically. Right. Yeah. Now, that being said, along with that, we have also launched uh, we have launched the credit tracker product. Currently, it's on the flow, but it will soon be on the app flow as well. Yeah. And the credit tracker product is a state-of-the-art product because uh, there we are not just telling consumers about what their credit health is, but we are also deep diving into how, how they can improve it, uh, yeah. what are the kind of initiatives they can take for them to be able to move their credit score from A to B, uh, and what it unlocks for them. Right. Nice. I think that's nice. critical for people to understand that a better credit score unlocks better opportunities, better access to credit uh, mm. in general. Right. Um, so uh, and not just that, right, whether it is, you know, there are multiple other initiatives like conflict resolution with Sybil, etc. That's going to be introduced. So mm -hmm. our credit tracker product is another key product to talk about, you know, how we, how consumers can be more prudent, how they mm -hmm. can be more informed with their decision-making around their personal finances, right? Yes. Uh, right. Uh, lastly, I would say that even in our collection comms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't try to strong arm consumers, but instead, if they do miss an EMI, for example, our focus is more about telling them, you know, uh, how to avoid the pit pitfalls of not repaying their loans on time. How does right. it affect their credit score? How does it affect their financial journey, right? Mm -hmm. So just tying back into my earlier point, it's all about empowering the consumer and education regarding uh, finances or other financial literacy is the biggest step towards that uh, with respect to, uh, you know, uh, getting the consumers to feel more in control of their life right. and in control of their finances. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're a company of 
the digital kind and i'm sure there are so many others as well today credit is so easy you just have to log into an app put your details get the kyc done and boom the money is in so i mean there's a lot of competition so how are you also maintaining a co competitive edge and i'm sure agility is also very important in doing that so how are you steering through that um so i th I think one of the things, some of these things I covered earlier, but you know, just to reiterate that, right? Um, a big part of maintaining our, maintaining and increasing our competitive edge is to do a lot of experimentation, mm -hmm. right? Experimentation on comms, on targeting, on offers, on product uh, categories that we are involved in, right? Uh, personalization with machine learning and generative AI. Yes. Uh, we're using a lot of generative AI like Bard, ChatGPT, etc., which makes us very quick. Uh, makes us very agile to be able to react to what the consumer needs at a particular point in time, right? Mm -hmm. Not just, I would say more than the digital age, it is the social age now, right? Mm -hmm. Where consumers have uh, unlimited access to information from multiple touch points, right? right. So their decision-making is no longer linear. And in an environment where there are multiple uh, points of uh, education for the consumer, some mm -hmm. of them might be wrong, some of them might be right. Um, you know, it's extremely important to be able to use the new age tools like AI uh, in order to cater to these consumers. Right. Now, so, so that is one of it. Uh, mm -hmm. We also take, uh, you know, uh, we test out new campaigns, new ideas and channels to see what resonates with the audience the most. Like, for example, we did a campaign uh, during Diwali called Hardin Diwali where we were giving away uh, interest-free loans to uh, uh, 100 consumers every day, almost for mm -hmm. a month, right? Uh, it was a lucky draw. And uh, we actually saw a lot of response. And what this means and what we learned from it is that uh, whenever you do a brand marketing campaign or you do any sort of campaign with the consumer, there has to be some sort of a payoff rather than a pure play, you know, brand building campaign. Mm -hmm. Like there's mm -hmm. no brand building campaign per se in today's day and age unless there is some of the other consumer payoff that we are tying into it, right? right? So mm -hmm. uh, that is another thing that we've learned, right? We are we, The idea is to do a lot of quick, smaller campaigns, get learnings from that and keep evolving as we go along to see what kind of offers work with the consumers and how do we package them. Mm -hmm. right? And um, I think that uh, consumer research is something that we do on a constant basis just to identify, uh, we do both online as well as offline, uh, just to identify what are the key factors that go into uh, the decision-making when consumers are taking loans or when they're looking for uh, a banking product or when they're looking for a, a credit health product, for example, or a credit tracking product, right? So right. I think um, a lot of experimentation, uh, quick experiments, not very large-scale experiments, not very high-cost experiments, is an approach that we are taking to the overall marketing to you know mm -hmm. stay uh, uh, stay abreast with what's happening on the consumer landscape. Right, yeah. and we're stepping into a new year. So, what do you think are going to be the key trends in the fintech industry per se? Um, good question. I think that um, one thing that I see is that, like I said, it's not about doing big associations and, you know, big campaigns, which run for a couple of months. And then, you know, you, you see the benefit and that conti uh, that continues for a certain duration of time. It's all about doing smaller, quicker campaigns, uh, having a strong consumer payoff that is backed by uh, a lot of research and a lot of A-B testing that has been done in the past. So mm -hmm. that is one, right? That is one thing which I see will be one of our key approaches for the next year as to how can we maybe do 12 to 15 campaigns in a year which are much smaller rather than do a large scale campaign. Uh, it's not that we won't do that, but I think the uh, the primary focus will be on the former rather than the latter. Uh, the second thing is, um, you know, uh, influencer marketing has been around and it has uh, penetrated a lot in the e-commerce space. It is now starting and, and it has started, I think, say, uh, for the past eight to 10 months, you're seeing a lot of influencers getting into the fintech space, right? The finfluencers, so as to speak, right. right? So our plan is also to really leverage YouTube as a channel to build a lot more educative content on mm -hmm. how 
consumers can improve their credit score? Uh, how can they earn better with us? What are the pitfalls of their financial journey that they can avoid? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what are the things they need to be wary of? What are the opportunities that they can leverage? All of that, right? right. The idea is to employ a lot of micro influencers in this segment. Uh, mm -hmm. And ETL already do. Uh, sorry, ETL already does it. Fintech dev brands have started doing it, but that's going to be a key focus for us as we build our social media channels. Right. That, uh, um, and the the next thing is that you know uh, there's not much loyalty per se in the fintech space towards a particular brand, right? Mm -hmm. right. To have a brand of choice when it comes to say a car that you purchase or uh, mm. you know uh, which FMCG product you use, yeah. right? Yeah, but when it comes to fintech, I don't think that there is a great level of loyalty yet because I think mm. brand building as a as an exercise um, has not really been done to great depth, right? Mm. The way in which mm. legacy FMCG brands have done, or maybe mm. certain fintechs abroad, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a few fintechs have been able to do it in India, but I still think that there's a lot of opportunity. Like mm. today, if you were to ask a consumer as to what according to them is the big difference as a brand that they see between all the fintechs currently who are offering whether it's a loan or any other product i don't know if they'll be able to tell what the brand personality is so yeah. that is another area where we plan to use a lot of surrogate brand marketing uh, you know uh, cost effective initiatives uh, you know guerrilla marketing short bursts of social media engagement mm -hmm. as ways in which we can continuously keep chipping away and building the brand you know okay. um the next one is uh, uh and another key focus is how do we build our low-cost channels we've started our referral program uh, and we've started scaling that we are seeing good results and we've started seeing that in the loan category uh you know word of mouth through referrals is something that really seems to be a good you know low cost channel and yeah. that's going to be a key focus for us along with building uh you know uh the affiliate channels right currently uh you know a lot of dependence is there on the traditional um, they've actually become traditional right uh, channels yeah. like say facebook etc while yeah. they are there the idea is also to diversify to see how we can spread our uh, uh, share of wallet and mm -hmm. make sure that we are using most cost effective techniques because that's going to be a key key focus for the coming year right i think that uh, um, uh, a key focus for every brand manager or every cmo in any fintech currently is going to be how do you develop cost effective channels for acquisition right crossell right. is going to be another key focus because we've been a loans only platform till now Hmm. But with uh, the credit tracker being launched, we'll use it as an acquisition tool, which is not just for personal loans, but also for the banking product. So right. still as a theme is going to be another key area that we're going to be focusing on. And last but not the least, uh, we definitely want to, uh, you know, we have certain associations that are coming up from a CSR point of view as well. Right. We want to be perceived as a very responsible fintech platform uh, you know money view is one of the founding partners of the digital lending association of india right uh, we want basically to get the word out there right for people to actually know this we mm -hmm. already do it it's already there in our dna it's just that i think the right form of communication the right kind of engagement will help mm -hmm. us uh, you know bridge that journey yeah. right right uh, and also, I quickly wanted to understand, you have a credit tracker coming up. Uh, what yeah. else can we expect from MoneyView in the coming year? Um, so we have a credit tracker product coming up. We also have um, a one-of-a-kind uh, banking product also that's going to come up, uh, which is going to give consumers the opportunity for uh, like never before, right? They're going to have the kind of security that uh, you would expect from say a fixed deposit, but also an earning rate, which you would expect from a uh, high yielding investment. Mm -hmm. right? So, so that is a product that we are very excited about and that should be live within the, within the next couple of months. Uh, we are also completely revamping our app, journey because we are moving into a super app uh, uh, sort of a, a, an interface and that would mean that uh, you know we have 
um, we would have a much more fluid journey between mm -hmm. products that's going to go live uh, mm -hmm. within the next couple of months. Um, we've also worked with McCann Group for our overall brand positioning, uh, McCann World Group India uh, for our overall brand positioning exercise, and we have our brand book in place. And so now the idea is going to be to disseminate this uh, uh, brand book to uh, the different aspects of the company, whether it is culture, whether it is our partners, whether it is consumers, etc. So that's going to be a big area of focus for us. Um, yeah, so I think that as of now, and secured loans also could be a part of what we are doing going forward. Currently, it's predominantly in unsecured loans, but we are also exploring, you know, the secured loans space uh, mm -hmm. in line with whatever we've been hearing from uh, the regulatory regulatory bodies in general, right? right? So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, it's exciting times ahead. Uh, but um, I think the biggest thing is for us to become a platform that um enables consumer literacy around finances i right. think that right. is a big initiative not just on marketing but on the csr front as well right pleasure interacting with you if there's anything else you'd like to add please go ahead uh no i think um, i pretty much covered everything and uh, yeah great question so it was a pleasure being here thank you so much for doing this